Everybody please turn to the book of Exodus. Let me show you something very quickly. Exodus chapter 22. And I want somebody in the choir with a microphone to read loudly. Verse 16 and verse 17. With a microphone, yes. Is your microphone working? And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. If her father utterly refuse to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Thank you very much. Sex alone makes the woman you have slept with your wife. Whether society sees it as that or not. In the spiritual world, anyone you have sex, had sex with is your husband, is your wife. But we're not paying attention to that. Because with that sexual exchange, you have already transferred destinies and merged them. Whether you go to the church or not, whether you carry yams to the family of the woman or not. And that's why the Bible says, for having sex alone, you have made yourself the husband of that woman. Therefore, go and pay the dowry on her head. It goes further in 17 to say, if the father looks at you and does not accept you as a worthy son-in-law, you still owe that dowry. That is how spiritually engaging, overwhelming that sex is. Now, the pitfall is simply titled, when sex blindfolds you as a prophet. So a girl comes to you, this is another normal thing we do in celestial church. I do not know where we get it from. It's not biblical. I know some prophets will be condemning this, but I've been preaching this more than 30 years. Nobody has contravened it. Nobody has proven it otherwise. A woman looks at her daughter and says, you are old enough to marry. Make a list of your boyfriends. From that point, even the mother accepts her daughter is promiscuous. So, write the list of the names of your boyfriends and let's go to the prophet. So, the stupid prophet, you accept a list of names. And then you claim you are scanning it spiritually. You are doing spiritual journey, spiritual inquiry. I said, number four, yeah, in your fellow. Listen, heavens and the earth may pass away, but none of the words of the Lord spoken shall go empty. They will be fulfilled. If the word of God says sex can blindfold a prophet, and the word of God says, early in the old testament that once there is sex they are married you take before the prophet a list of four five men that have had sex with you you have already four five husbands will any celestial prophet tell you that all of them no near yeah, your fellow the prophet himself knows he'll be stupid to say so so don't be fooled. We are not 100% in trance when we are giving you a message. A lot of us know what we are saying. There are six different ways that a prophet and can enter into the realm of the spirit to give revelation. Only one out of those six is complete trance. In fact, the way I like to describe it, it's a case of spiritual possession where a spirit from heaven or a demon from hell possesses the body of the prophet or the prophetess and goes forth to speak like a divine spirit. In such cases, the prophet is not aware of what he is doing or what he is saying or what he is seeing. Hallelujah. And that is the purest state 
of prophetic release. When you are not in control of it and a spirit, but woe betide you if it's a demonic spirit. If it's a spirit of divine light, everything you say at that point is not contestable. Heavens and the earth may pass away. Everything you have said will be fulfilled. That was the earliest manifestation of the prophetic gift. It is rarely available now. Why? It's not because we are not good enough vessels. Those prophets of old in celestial church who demonstrated that, they are not any better than us morally. Many of them have eight, nine wives now. Many of them are guilty of immorality. Yet God used them. The reason is that in that dispensation, God was still announcing and advertising celestial church. He needed the drama of that spiritual manifestation. Like a man will be in trance and they'll be seeing him in his office. That does not happen anymore. Why? Because God does not need that to happen anymore. When Papa was alive, Papa raised over 20 dead people. You don't need to raise anybody now for Celestia Church to be filled. That's why it's not happening. What is happening right now is that prophets and prophetesses who are not checking themselves are derailing the destinies of people. If you're truly of God, what you should see is that all the four or five names, because they have had sex with that girl, are her husband. But what the prophet will now do is move from primary level of investigation to secondary level. The primary level of prophetic inquiry is pure. Where the prophet does not add or remove from what the Lord is showing him. And there are still a lot of prophets and prophetesses in celestial church who operate at that level. They are sincere. There's nothing about their lives that will push them to greed. So they will say it as they see it. Many are still at that level. But you know, if the prophet says it as he sees it, they will think he's the one who's not seeing vision. How can you say five people are her husband? What kind of will is this one? So he will do secondary inquiry. He'll be looking at the profile of each of them. Now God is not going to download the profile. If I ask you to give me your CV, even those of you who are not graduates yet, if you add everything in your education and experience right now, your CV will be at least a full page. If God were to download a full page to a prophet, can you read it? So in the secondary inquiry, the prophet is looking at, are you rich? Is he rich? Is he poor? And these things are symbolic. So the prophet sees number four in front of a Mercedes sports car. In these days of Instagram selfie. Is somebody following me? Does that mean that the car belongs to the guy? No! prophetic vision, Now let's even imagine that the car in front of which is sees number four belongs to number four and the car is rich. So the prophet is right in concluding that number four is rich. And then prophet says to you because he likes you that you marry a rich man. What he has not seen is that in the boot of that car are laptops for Yahoo Yahoo. What he has not seen is that on his back seat are boxing gloves and kicking shoes for the woman he will marry. So he has picked for you a rich man. You and your mother are happy. You and your mother are stupid. And the prophet is a spiritual criminal. And that is what is happening. So the risk is too high. When sex, not sex that the prophet has had, 
But sex that you, who is going for spiritual inquiry, has had with all the men you have brought forth. Blindfolds the prophet. I have labored in almost 15 minutes to just preach number one pitfall. We might not be able to look at all five, but let's look at number two. The second pitfall is when the prophet or the prophecy is fake. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 18 says, in verse 18, God says, I will raise from among every assembly of my people a spokesperson, a prophet, or if female, a prophetess, who will speak my own message to the people. Now, if you read verse 21 and 22, somebody quickly. Microphone. Is that microphone working? And if thy faith in thy heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But Did everybody hear that scripture very well? Thank you for me. Is that not the problem of the church right now? We see everybody in four corner, blue line, male and female. But how do we know the one that is true? And then they're asking God, give us a formula, a Pythagoras theorem maybe, by which we will know. Every time a prophet or a prophetess in celestial church speaks to us, give us a formula by which we will know whether Woli Femi Ogunaike is correct or Woli Matthew Ogunsuada is correct. Or prophet precious look who is correct give us a formula what is the answer god gave he says in the fullness of time will you know which the lord has spoken or your lawa we're on our own you cannot get a deeper response than the one the lord has offered why did god not give an exact formula by which you will know because later on, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where the gifting of the Spirit is released on, on people, one of those gifts is the Spirit of discernment. It is a gift. And the fact that it is a gift given to people means that it is not available for everyone. Membership of Celestial Church does not confer the gift of discernment upon all of us automatically no if you don't have the gift of discernment you're on your own so you're looking at kh uh -uh. kh was the world leader of hallelujah parish for 15 years if he gives a message he cannot be wrong or you're lower he can be very very wrong for first corinthians 13 says at the end of the day the best of us we only know in part Somebody look for it and read it out. I want a prophet or a prophetess to go and look for it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Go down to, I think, verse 9. Verse 9. Yes. To another. No, no, no. Maybe go for Maybe 12. For we no, not 13. Not 13. 12. Oh, sorry. Sorry. 13. 13, 9. Not 12, 9. Thank you. What's, please, remove that microphone. Don't be tempted to use it because I can't hear you. No, use a microphone that's good. First Corinthians 13 verse 9. Please read. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Go out on. Superior, senior, world leader, you know in part. Junior, prophet, you know in part. Most superior, evangelist, prophet, you know in part. The best of us. All we do is no impact. Nobody knows a hundred percent. So why are we pretending that the messages we are giving to people are a hundred percent? When God himself showed Joseph the picture of his future, Joseph was able to see it only in part. 
He did part one. You know, like Nollywood film. God had to show him again. He did part two. Even in part two, Joseph could not see the whole of the picture. He did not see in the picture he will go to jail. He did not see in the picture Potiphar's wife will pursue him. The same Joseph that kings were waiting upon to give them dream interpretations. What are you talking about? I'm hoping that one prophet or prophetess online or in church with me right now will take a decision not to derail anybody's destiny. Let us stop playing God over the lives of people. What God has given us in Celestial Church that is supposed to be a big plus in 74 years has been a big minus. Only those who handle it right made it a big plus and we of today's generation we are trying to live on the glory of who did it right rather than concentrate on doing it right ourselves praise the lord for those who are giving messages the danger is still in Deuteronomy 28 uh, 18 god said every prophet that presumes to speak in my name that I have not given authority to do so shall die. So, we are looking at the fake prophets and prophetesses in Celestial Church. And then you are asking yourself, in all the time that this prophet or prophetess has been giving fake messages, he has not died. He has died. He is just walking. But the Lord could send him more. So you are not dead. Your marriage is not working. Your children are not doing well. You don't have any job. You are doing babalawo inside church. Waiting for the next victim. You are dead. Oh, because we have not buried you. You are already dead. Nothing meaningful about your life. Unfortunately, these prophets and prophetesses that are dead but still walking around they cannot trace the reason they are dead to all the mistakes they have made with prophecies. You've been fixing people for marriages that God did not send you to fix. How can your own marriage work? You've derailed the death. Oh my God. You know, anybody who comes back to watch this live stream of the content I'm putting on right now will think that all prophets and prophetesses in Celestial Church are useless. Of course not. Of course not. People have asked me before, why do I always concentrate on showing the areas of prophecy that are negative? Of what benefit is it to the body of Christ for me to be hyping the positive side of prophecy? Of what benefit? The positive side will announce itself. It's the negative side that is ruining both the prophet and those they are giving prophecies to that I should highlight so that the positive side can continue to thrive while people are avoiding the negative side. So if prophets and prophetesses in Lagos and Nigeria and indeed the world continue to hate me, so be it. But if I'm saving lives by telling you the truth, then I'm doing the right thing. Any prophet that is striving to keep his record clean will love what I preach. But those who take advantage of people, they will hit me. Then they have never stopped. I just remembered now all the destiny derailment that a lot of us prophets and prophetesses do on the eighth day of naming babies. When we are given messages not from God. But we are just doing everything to maintain righteousness. Fulfill righteousness. Oh the entire church and the shepherd expect that I must give three to four names. So let me provide those names. Whether those names are tied to the destiny of the child or not. Let me just provide them. So that they will not think that God is not speaking to me. My 
My son was not 12 years old yet. When they gave him a message in a certain parish, and he came back home, he didn't even bother to tell me. Then his mother asked me, has Timilei told you they gave him a message in church today? I said, no. I said, Timmy, they gave you a message. His response was, oh, dad, I didn't want to bother you with it because from the beginning to the end, there was nothing in that message that is mine. That is a boy that was less than 12 years old. A boy who stood on the pulpit at the age of 12 in Maranatha and said, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ entered into the temple at the age of 12 and preached his word. And that exactly is what I'm doing at the age of 12 today. Now the difference between him and the average celestial his age then was knowledge. And that's what prophets and prophetesses should seek. But they don't. You will not find prophets and prophetesses in Bible class in celestial church. They are above Bible class. And the only Bible class and Bible study will give you wisdom. The number one gift. So that you can flourish well in prophecy. The number six gift. Prophets don't want to hear this. Prophecy, go to the book of 1 Corinthians 12. Prophecy is a number six gift. Meaning, there are five gifts senior to prophecy. Yet, in CNS, in Celestial Church, and a lot of garment wearing churches, we have promoted a number six gift to be a number one gift. Whether the prophecy and the prophets are wise or not, we don't care. Meanwhile, a prophet or prophetess without wisdom, without the word of God, is a violent accident, fatal accident, looking for where to happen. The second pitfall is when the prophet is fake or the prophet is genuine and his message is fake his prophecy is fake that also happens the fact that a prophet Kunle Hamilton gave you a wonderful message on Saturday when you went to do Ishono does not mean that he cannot package fake prophecy for you on Sunday. Is everybody listening? Stop worshipping the prophet. Worship the Lord who has sent him. So that even when the prophet is giving you fake, the Lord will somehow protect you from the fakeness of the message. Number three, when the prophet is bribed to lie. When the prophet is bribed to lie. Now, any prophet and prophetess listening to me right now, think of the many ways you've been bribed before. Sometimes with money, sometimes with gifts, or sometimes even with the promise of sex. Today, the younger generation of fake prophets and prophetesses in our great church. They don't even need money anymore. It's a Jide walking to a prophet Yinka and saying to Yinka, help me give that girl Yemisi a message that I am her boyfriend. So on the strength of friendship, prophet Yinka is bribed. Woe betide Yemisi. Who somebody already told that the day she entered Celestial Church. Oluawi, not Elaine Celestial Church. Oluawi, that's the dictum. Thus, the Lord saith. So, a prophet Yinka comes to a sister Yemisi and does all the drama. You know the preamble before messages come. Bolu. Because I... I, I Around 1 a.m., I watched Bolu 
doing choreography for the choir that will minister on harvest day. Some prophets know they don't need bolu, they will do the choreography by themselves. Just to convince you God is using them. So that by the time they land the package, whether it's Kayamata or special package, Otik Babenye. Now, I'm not trying to make funny this message. These things I'm talking about have cost people membership of the Celestial Church. Cost people their marriage. Cost people their destiny. And even you hearing me, honestly, you're just fortunate to be in Praiseville. Where no prophet is looking to make you a victim. There are people who sleep and wake up thinking who is going to be my next victim. Because they don't have money in their pocket. So somebody comes, the prophet has become like a Nigerian policeman. You come to the church, what do you bring for me? He comes to your house, what do you get for me? I'll tell you a story. Then I'll end it here. Another time, we'll look at the two remaining ones. But if you can read them on your own, I will post this on our Telegram group. It's just one slide. Then you can educate yourself. And anybody who watches this live stream can ask questions. I'm going to ask you to ask questions in the next 10 minutes. So let me just stop on number three. Many years ago, as the world leader in CCC Hallelujah Cathedral, Ikmari, on a Saturday, a woman came from the CNS church with her daughter. Her daughter, young as she was at that time, was a bass guitarist. Very rare gift to see a young girl play the bass guitar in any church. Her mother brought her. She had asked around, where is there a hot prophet? And they had said, there is one hot prophet in Ukmari. So she came there. And I was there. She asked, are you prophet Kunle? I said, yes. Uh, this is my daughter. I want you to shut up for her. I said, okay, go and get her a candle. A young lady, kneel down, take the candle, pray. Whatever it is, you're seeking the face of the Lord for. And in my usual style, I walked into the church. They don't pray for me. When I want to do a show, no. I pray for myself. And I go to the altar. I sanctify myself. I pray to the Lord. Then I come out. With both guns blazing. As I was walking towards the altar, the woman left her daughter in front of the church and came to the side entrance on the female side and whispered at me, So I deterred and she said, Hey, Josa. My daughter is following one nonsense boy. And I've told her she should stop following that boy. I brought her here so you can tell her to stop following that boy. That boy will not amount to anything. He has nothing to, to give her. Then she said, I will give you money if you help me do that. The daughter did not know that her mother was bringing her lori raw. This woman who wanted to give me money entered bus with her daughter to come to church. I packed my own car to come and shun off for people in the church. So, what could she afford to give me? Now, how many prophets, I'm talking more than 30 years ago, that I've been driving my own cars, bought with my own money. How many prophets in the Celestial Church, at my age, at that time, could afford it? Indeed, how many prophets today, who don't have any job or any business, bought cars for themselves. They are waiting for people to gift them cars because church cannot afford to buy car for them. Thank God that greed 
was not one of the forces that drove my spiritual office. I just said to her, Mutibo. So I continued to the altar, prayed. By the time I went out and started speaking in the name of the Lord, the woman abandoned her daughter and told her daughter, Bamile, because everything I was releasing was with the cause. Now that young girl at that time, her name was Fumi. The nonsense boy she was following, his name was Fumi. Today, Fumi and Fumi have been married for more than 25 years. I attended the wedding of their first daughter in St. Jude's Cathedral, Oyugo. The Fumi boy, that nonsense boy, is a bishop in the Anglican Church. The nonsense boy. And for me, is an Iyayad. If I had derailed the destiny of a bishop marrying that for me, will my own home be settled today? Will my own children be settled today? That's what a lot of prophets and prophetesses do not know. Everything we do is a seed. Surely a harvest is on the way. My prayer for all of you. Open your eyes of understanding. Don't be taken away, blown away, derailed by the beauty of prophetic messages. Seek the Lord yourself. Let the Spirit speak to you. So that when prophets and prophetesses are sent to you, you can evaluate the messages you hear based on the word of God and the conviction of your heart. If you do not have a, a relationship with God, fake prophets will derail you. But to all the prophets and prophetesses in Celestial Church who do not operate by greed, self-service, eye service, my prayer is, may your light continue to shine brightly. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.